So this talk is all about um, snapshot testing, which I've recently started using quite heavily. And this has changed the way I do testing. It's absolutely amazing. And this is a library written by Simon Crop, um, who, as I said, I, I think he's, he said he was going to attend, so he might be in the Twitch stream. Um, and there's a library called Verify.net. And let's just call it out where to go. It's on GitHub. It's open source. And he's very active on it, doing lots of extensions and stuff. And we'll talk about extensions in a bit. And he actually, um, quite a few episodes ago, um, appeared on the podcast. So if this talk piques your interest, then I would definitely check out this because we spoke a lot about this library and the concept of snapshot testing in general. So if we take a typical, it's a very, very, very simple test where you've got your arrange act assert. So you've got your range, you're like newing up some system under test. You're acting, you're calling something, but then you're doing the assert. And so snapshot testing is kind of about this bit, the assert bit. So imagine that result being returned is a really complicated object. So it's a .NET object, lots of properties. Some of those pro properties might be other DTOs. So um, you've got nested, complex kind of thing. What goes here? As in, so do, you, do you start spending ages writing lots of things like this? This might look quite familiar. You start typing all this out. Uh, different tests might want to have different expected data. That takes a lot of time. When you're using snapshot testing, it's that. As in, that's all you have to do. So how this works is the, the first time you run your test ever, this test is going to fail. And what it does is, locally, when you have a failing test, it will launch your diff tool. And on the left, this is, if we go back actually, this is, resu this is what we passed in here in the result. And that's automatically done. And you can see on the right, that is empty, because this is the first time we've run the test. So they're different. So the test is failing. I, I use WinMerge as my diff tool. It supports lots of different diff tools, so it might support uh, obviously WinMerge, Beyond, Beyond Compare, various other ones. But whatever your chosen diff tool of choice, if you copy left to right, then that is basically saying that I'm happy with that result. That is a passing test. So part of the workflow is you get this, you look at it, you review it, saying, is that what I expected? If you're happy, then you can click left to right, and that will then, so this, this verified file here is this file here. And by copying left to right, you're saying, yep, yeah, this is accepted. And it's in source control. So this verified file goes into source control. That's the snapshot that you say, that's what I wanted. And you can see if I run it again at the bottom, there's a passing test there. A few months down the line, a bug gets introduced, like a, a a tax bug, tax calculation bug or something. When the test fails, straight away you get your diff tool and immediately you can see what's wrong, you can see what's changed. If you think about this in a normal, like your ID and you get your output and you've got the actual at the top, the expected at the bottom, it's badly formatted JSON, you've got to like copy it, format it, almost copy it into a tool like this manually to work out what's changed. And this, boom, you get out of the box just straight away. So if you think like, with that expected data, with not having to write expected data, with quickly being able to see, uh, just be able to see what, as soon as the test fails, you get your diff tool up and you can see, see what's changed. With all of these things, think about the time saving that that's caused. It's, it's, it's insane how much time that, time that actually um, has saved me anyway. Um, it's not, uh, Verify has lots of other um, concepts as well. There's one called Scrubbers. So, if we look at the top, this JSON here, and if we go back actually, so that's like the JSON on the left. Sometimes in tests you might have GUIDs or you might have date times, and that's going to be different on each test run. It might change. So automatically verify will take, and um, basically if I highlight some of these, you can see these two GUIDs are the same, and in the bottom they become GUID underscore one. This GUID is different. And you can see in the bottom it becomes GUID underscore two. So basically verify is automatically replacing these before it does the diff comparison. And then you can see the same with the date time as well. So that means that a lot, lots of tests which this serialized um, 
the thing you're asserting against, which might have GUIDs that change each time, date times that change each time, Verify automatically handles that. They've also got a diff engine tray. That, so this is Windows only, but um, I've, I've got to be honest, and Sam's going to shout at me for this, but I've still not found it. it when we were on the podcast episode chatting about it, he said he uses this all the time. I've still not found a use case for this, but uh, maybe uh, the more I use it, the more I will, but I've not needed it yet. But basically, it allows you to bulk approve. The, so when you get your diff tools popping up, you can say, OK, they're all fine. But I prefer to actually accept each one individually. Uh, but that is Windows only. It's an optional install. It's a .NET tool install as well, so it's super easy to install. Um, so Simon has made this library very, very, very extendable. So you can see on the left all the extensions. He's got loads. I've called out a few here, things like Playwright, which I'll show in a bit, Entity Framework, Blazor, Cosmos, D I won't read them all out, but um, these are the ones that kind of jumped out as being like really cool, but obviously there's a long list. There was one. Um, so MOQ, the testing library, um, I, th I actually, there wasn't an extension. And I, what, do you know where you do the verifiers? You're verifying whether things were called when you're doing like MOQ. I was thinking, oh, actually, rather than doing each one, it'd be good if I can take my mock and just snapshot it and say, have a serialized thing with information about um, how many times has my um, interface method been called, that kind of thing. And so I pinged Simon just as a suggestion went to bed, got up the next morning, checked my Twitter DMs, and he had written it. It was on NuGet, and I was using it that day. That's how fast he knocks out these new libraries. And he openly says, if you have any ideas for extensions, please reach out, because I think he wants, really wants people to engage with this kind of thing. So if you have any ideas, then do shout out. Um, one of the extensions Playwright, I thought it was quite cool, so I thought I'd quickly call out. Uh, some bit of code just calling out here the these this is the verify bits everything else isn't verify so at the top this is a module initializer so this is just a dotnet thing it runs you put this once in your test project and you can see this is just uh, enabling that extension and then you've got your test at the bottom and you can see the uh, you're probably quite familiar with this now verify.verify .verify, you're passing in the playwright page and looking at the playwright code in fact, taking a step back, actually, in case you don't know what Playwright is, it's basically a web UI testing framework. Think Selenium, or Selenium, however you pronounce it. Um, and it's that kind of thing, but it's much better. It supports async await, it's .NET, it's, uh, it's a, a library Microsoft created, and it's actually really, really, really good. So if you're not seen Playwright, definitely check it out. But this talk isn't about Playwright, but hopefully this code is fairly obvious what it's doing. So um, it, we're instantiating Playwright, doing a Chrome thing, and then going to my podcast website. And then, then as we said before, we're, going, we're verifying the page. When you run that for the first time, obviously the first time you run it, it's a failing test, as we've seen before. Instead of serializing the .NET object with JSON, like we saw before, this is now showing the Playwright screenshot. So you can see that on the left. So in the same way, as you, if you're happy with this, you can copy left to right. The, when you run this verify.verify .verify on Playwright, it does two snapshots. It does the one we've just seen, and it also does the HTML. So you can do left to right for both and the HTML. And, um, and that's, so that's it. So within that code, you've got playwright testing, and you've got verify snapshot testing as well within just a few five lines of code, uh, ignoring that but per test. Uh, recording, so ignore the background, it's kind of obviously, I'm not, talk I'm not talking about audio recording here, I'm just talking about the concept of recording, but it looked a cool background, so why not? But Playwright, ha sorry, not Playwright, Verify has a concept of recording, and depending on the, what we're talking about, it can mean different things. I'm going to look, I'm talking about, uh, I'm, I'm going to do an example for Entity Frameworks, I thought that this was quite cool. Again, calling out the verify stuff. So at the top, module initializer, enabling the extension like we saw before. In the test, when setting up the entity framework stuff, build the dot enable recording. And then in the act, we're just saying start recording before we do our code. And then at the bottom, you're quite familiar with it, verify.verify. .verify. The entity framework code is just, I'm just adding something to a database. Obviously, that would then, this would actually be calling your production code, which might be doing this inside the code. I've just inlined it at the moment. But it's just some .NET stuff, uh, some entity framework stuff. You'll notice that in the verify at the bottom, 
we're passing in uh, which one the count which is how many tables were written but so we're kind of very we're snapshotting the count but because we're starting recording we get extra stuff in our snapshot as well so if I go to this we can now see that we've got SQL so automatically we've snapshotted the entity framework and the SQL that entity framework has generated and bear in mind that test might be an integration test where your business code is calling lots of entity framework stuff so you, this would be a lot bigger and you get lots of SQL and everything. You can snapshot test this. This goes in your source control. And imagine, so imagine then a bug gets written which, which messes up the SQL that gets generated by a, a, a link query or an anti framework query. Or you upgrade a library, like maybe you upgrade uh, the latest version of EF anti framework and Microsoft have either improved something or screwed something up. Your, your test will fail, fail and you can compare what's changed in that SQL and accept it if you're happy. But you get the visibility for free. And by free, I mean just like doing start recording for that. On top of your test, you get all that visibility and, sa and a safety net because if it changes, you see it straight away. Um, so I think I'm probably overrunning um, already. Uh, so just a reminder, this is the link. Uh, if Simon is on the on the stream, thank you so much. This is awesome, and also a reminder that he was on the podcast. So go check that out. And I am Draken on Twitter, which is D R A C A N, and my um, DMs are open if you want to get in touch. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right.